Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Derek Murray! <laughs> Huntington Beach, what's going on? Oh, this is amazing. I am so excited. Thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate it. Doing a live taping, which is a lot of pressure. It's a lot, it's a lot of pressure, because most comedians that get to do this, they get to run it by like four, five, six, seven different audiences. I gotta do it once. I gotta do this whole thing in one take. I am like the Jay-Z of stand-up comedy. <laughs> Except if this goes south, I have no idea how to go back to selling crack rock on the streets of Brooklyn. I have no, no idea how to do that. I, re I have never done hard drugs in my life. Never done a single hard drug, and I've got two reasons why. One, I know that I'm gonna be the guy that does half a tab of ecstasy and dies. That, I think I am the commercial that they will use. Derek Murray partied once, died. <laughs> Paid for by the California Drug Administration. <laughs> the other reason I haven't done hard drugs is because I know they're awesome! I know they're amazing, and I know that I will probably love them, and I'll probably die! I'll be the next commercial. Derek did too many drugs. Party too hard. Died. <laughs> Paid for by the California Drug Administration. <laughs> I can't party. I'm look, I'm I'm 34 years old, and I realize that after you turn 30, you have to start being an adult. And nobody told me that being an adult is just living paycheck to paycheck and then convincing everybody else that you don't live paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> I was lied to my whole life. I knew I was getting older because I started coming down with random medical conditions. Like I got heart palpitations for the first time. You ever had that happen where your heart just wants to beatbox for no reason? That was the weirdest feeling in the world that lasted for like a week. It freaked me out. I had no idea what to do. So I did the stupidest thing you can do when you come down with any medical condition. I Googled it. Don't ever Google your symptoms. That is a hundred pages as to why you're probably gonna die. You're gonna have a doctor like, doctor, I've got this really weird rash. Google thinks I'm gonna die. He's like, Mr. Murray, that's a sunburn. Uh, here's some aloe vera and a tampon for your vagina. Get the fuck out of my office. I did, I Googled what to do when you have heart palpitations. And the first thing that came up was a forum that said, hey, I just did meth 24 hours ago. <laughs> my heart is beating out of my chest. What do I do? Okay, that has nothing to do with me at all, but I have to know the answer to this question. <laughs> so I click on it and it is 30 comments of people going, hey bro, next time you do meth, don't do so much in one sitting. <laughs> Hey bro, next time you do meth, take some benzos and chill yourself out. <laughs> hey bro, I did meth for three days and I turned out fine. <laughs> Not one person in 30 comments was like, hey bro, maybe don't fucking do meth. <laughs> Freaked me out. <laughs> Freaked me out, so I was like, all right, you know what, I'm gonna have to try to start taking care of myself. I'm gonna try to lose some weight. I was like, I'm gonna have to start dieting. Dieting sucks. The worst part about dieting is most of the time you try to start a diet on a Monday, and then 24 hours later, it's already Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Bullshit, I don't know how skinny people do it. I've been trying to go to the gym a little bit more, I've been trying to work out. I've got really simple fitness goals, I'm not trying to be the rock, just got very simple fitness goals. Like, I just, I wanna be able to tie my shoe and not be able to consider it cardio. <laughs> you ever come up from tying your shoe and you're dizzy? You just, why am I seeing spots? <laughs> Other fitness goals, I want to be able to accidentally open up my front-facing camera. 
and not be terrified when I see my own face. <laughs> you do that shit where you're like, all right, guys, I'll go ahead and take the picture to, oh, my God! How come no one told me I grew an extra chin? <laughs> my biggest fitness goal, guys, is I just want to be able to have sex and not hear fart noises every time my body touch. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> I know I'm getting older because I have to start taking naps just to get through my day. Yeah. I don't know who these people are that just take naps and they wake up feeling refreshed, ready to take on whatever life throws at them. When I wake up from a nap, I have no idea what's going on for 15 minutes. I wake up from a nap, I'm like, what the fuck? Am I being born right now? What is happening? Starting to get gray hairs already. You can see it. I've got this little touch of gray in here. Somebody told me, they were like, oh, Derek. Don't worry about it. Those are just angel kisses. <laughs> that is not comforting at all. That means there's some creepy ass angel in heaven kissing my forehead going, they're gonna see you real soon. <laughs> oh, I'm getting older. <laughs> I know I'm getting older because of the type of television I like to watch. I'm a really big fan of Chopped. Oh, Chopped is the greatest show on television. If you guys haven't seen it, as soon as the show is over, just go home. It's probably on the Food Network already. It never stops, it's like baseball, it's incredible. That show is amazing. If you've never seen the show, they take four cooks and they give them random basket ingredients and they set a time limit. And they have to make something amazing out of these ingredients that they've never seen before. And then they get three judges to judge them on their food. And there's an amazing part in the show where right before the judges are about to eat the food, the host asked one of the contestants, why do you want to win Chopped? And they always give the saddest sob story you have ever heard. They're always like, well, I was kicked out of my house when I was 14. I've been living on the streets for most of my life. I've done all the hard drugs and I haven't been on a commercial. And after my last prison stint, the only job I could get was as a cook. And I realized how much food means to me. And honestly, cooking is the only reason I haven't killed myself yet. <laughs> and immediately after, the judges go, your sauce is shit, your steak's undercooked. <laughs> they just crush dreams every episode. It's amazing. I feel like life is just this really long episode of Chopped. <laughs> You just get born and they're like, all right, open up your baskets. It's a college degree you'll never use. And disappointed parents. And alcoholism. And a job you hate but can't quit for the rest of your life. Go on out there and make something amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Too close to home. Someone's like, those are all the things I hate about myself. You forgot student loan debt, too. <laughs> I've been on a big Netflix kick lately. Netflix is amazing. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, clap it up for Netflix. Netflix is incredible, I love it. I, Netflix is amazing, you ever get that one show that you just like, you can't like, you can't stop watching? Like Netflix is just like, I literally showered just to watch another episode. Like that's, that's the closest I've ever felt to an addict. I'm just sitting on my couch like, let me just get one more episode. I just did, I'll quit tomorrow, I'll quit tomorrow. My family's having like a Netflix intervention for me. <laughs> like, Derek, listen, we're doing this out of love. But your addiction to Gossip Girl has affected me in the following ways. <laughs> I watched so many episodes of Netflix in a row, my Xbox gave me an achievement. <laughs> we get that one show that you just can't stop watching. You just binge watch the entire season, and halfway through, Netflix just stops, and it goes, are you still watching? <laughs> Netflix thinks you died. <laughs> I don't know. I'm at that age where like I can't like girls hook me up with their friends anymore. Cause most of the time, like it's never any of the hot friends that I've ever met. It's always like the one ugly friend none of us ever knew you had. And ladies, you always try to do like a hard sell. Every woman in here has done the okay, she's really pretty. Okay, well I think she's really pretty. Figured out your code, ladies. What you tell me is not what I hear. 
And you come to me and you're like, all right, listen, she's got huge boobs. That means she's fat. She's got a great personality. That means she's ugly. You guys are totally gonna get along. That means you think I'm ugly, this is bullshit. anybody would want to date in this age. Like social media, I feel like social media just makes breaking up really difficult. Like remember when you could break up with someone and you never had to see them? You could just pretend they died and everything was cool. And now when you break up with someone, the first thing you see is a tweet from your ex going, oh my god, my life is amazing now, hashtag blessed! She's all vindictive, tagging you in pictures you're not even in, just, I'm in Havasu, bitch, I'm not! I don't know why anybody would want to do that. <laughs> I like social media though. I think social media is great. Like I, I'm a big fan of Facebook. I like Facebook a lot. Uh, the problem with Facebook though is I feel like Facebook has made us the laziest generation ever. Everybody wants to be a social activist as long as it doesn't require doing anything at all. <laughs> think about every social issue that came up, no matter where you stand, the political debates, Trump, it's homosexual equality, immigration, doesn't matter what it is. What did we do? We changed our profile picture. <laughs> that's it, that's literally all we did. What if all of American history was decided by our generation? Rosa Parks just changes her profile picture to her front seat, like. <laughs> still in the back, but Facebook's gonna make a difference. <laughs> get some chain picture of Martin Luther King. It's like, if this picture gets a million likes, I'll tell you about my great dream I had. <laughs> I love California. California's the best state. I love this place. California's amazing. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else, uh, except for the fact that we have to pay 10 cents for bags. That is the, look, that's the only law that's ever gone into effect that actually had an effect on my life 24 hours later. That's never happened before. My land is like, I can afford the 10 cents, okay? It's the principle, all right? I didn't even know that was a thing until I was shopping and I'm putting all my stuff on the belt and this woman asks me a question no one has asked me in 34 years. Would you like a bag? Uh, no, bitch, I'm gonna juggle. What do you think? <laughs> what kind of question is that? I'm the target. None of this stuff on the belt was planned. I came here for one thing. <laughs> no one goes to Target for one thing, by the way. That's, I don't care what you think. You can pull into the parking lot of Target, sit down and just psych yourself off and be like, all right, all you need is a toothbrush. <laughs> That's it. Just a toothbrush. You can do this. 30 seconds into Target, you're like, you know what, I do need to redesign my entire living room. You're absolutely right, I do. I need all of this. When you get back out to your car, and you're like, fuck, I forgot the toothbrush, shit! So I've got all this stuff, and she asked me this stupid question of do I want a bag, and yes, of course, I would like, however, I would like a bag, yes, absolutely. Follow-up question, how many bags do you need? So now I'm a real life word problem? She could have just asked me if two trains are heading in opposite directions at 60 miles an hour, how many bags do you need? Also, I've been trying to figure out why everybody suddenly is allergic to gluten. We've been eating bread for centuries, and I feel like one model in LA was like, I like white bread, and we all just ran with it. We were all just like, yeah, that's right, that's an, that's an allergy. It's like people that don't vaccinate their kids because they like Jenny McCarthy on Singled Out. Like that's, it just sounds made up. Like, I had a friend, she'd never mentioned it before, ever, and all of a sudden she comes to me and she's like, Derek, I think I have a gluten allergy. I was like, okay, Becky, uh, of course her name's Becky Barnes. <laughs> It's like, okay, Becky, why do you think that? And she's like, well, every time I eat pizza, I get sick. It's like, okay, uh, you ate a whole pizza. <laughs> After six shots of Fireball, that's not, it's not gluten allergy, that's just partying too hard on a Tuesday, that's not. And then it's the only allergy that people brag about. 
Like, I don't know if you know this, but that's not how allergies work. They talk about it like they just did CrossFit. Like, they're so annoying. Like, you never hear anybody with a peanut allergy and have an ego. Like, nobody can feel good about themselves knowing they can die by a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like, that's not... And I did the research, guys. Less than 1% of all Americans actually have a gluten allergy. That amounts to like two million people. That means if Trump just woke up tomorrow and was like, gluten is the enemy of the people, and we should deport everybody, you would have no clue they're gone. None, you'd have no idea. That's actually a deportation I can get behind. I'm okay with this, actually. I, I can get behind that. Like, let's leave Pedro alone and let's get rid of all the Beckys and Todd's. Let's just, good. Let's get rid of gluten altogether. I'm uh, biracial, I'm black and white. Yeah, yeah, you would think that that's cool, but uh, really all it means is that my white friends can say the most racist, ignorant shit without even meaning to be that racist. I was telling my friend this story about how I got stuck in Hollywood. I had to walk down Hollywood Boulevard all by myself at 2 a.m. If you guys know anything about Hollywood, when the lights go dim, stars in the ground don't shine as bright as they normally do. <laughs> Shit gets real, that street Spider-Man packs up and goes home. Like, he's not sticking around, it's dangerous. So I'm telling her this story and she looks me dead in the eye and she goes, well, it's a good thing you're black, right? <laughs> Is my skin tone bulletproof? Like what? <laughs> like if a crackhead wants to kill me on Hollywood Boulevard, I can't just be like, Negro powers activate. Like, that's <laughs> actually give people black power. <laughs> so on my journey down Hollywood Boulevard, this super gangster black dude starts walking towards me. And guys, look, I'm half white. I'm scared of black people too, okay? <laughs> so he starts walking towards me and the white half just starts freaking out. Like, I'm so terrified. And he gets up to me and he's like, hey man, hey man, you got a cigarette? Before my white half could even respond to black and he was like, no nah, man, I ain't got a cigarette. <laughs> White half just starts losing its shit, like this is it, I'm gonna die, I just turned out a black man. Is this Ryan Seacrest of Star? Is this where it ends? Okay. And he's like, all right, man, stay up. Throws a symbol up, I throw it back at him, it saved my life, I got superpowers, guys. <laughs> it doesn't have any advantage. Like, I just get racially, I got racially profiled at the dentist office. I went into the dentist office for my appointment, Little lady, reception lady was like, oh, okay, go ahead and have a seat in the waiting room. So I sit down and there's country music playing on the TV. And this bitch grabs the remote control, walks around the counter and changes it to Telemundo. <laughs> I was like, what kind of racist shit is this? So I called her on it and I was like, all right, look, First of all, I don't have a problem with country. And second, like, I'm not Hispanic at all. Like, I'm, I'm black and white. And she goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Here, bitch changes it to BET. <laughs> Any advantage. I love my dad, my dad is amazing. Uh, my dad, he raised me and my two younger brothers. And me and my brothers are proof that as long as you have great parenting, you can still be huge fuck-ups as children. <laughs> I'll paint the picture for you guys. My youngest brother has only been legally able to drink for three years. He is already a recovering alcoholic. <laughs> my middle brother is a recovering heroin addict, and he used to come over to my house all the time and be like, hey bro, I'm just gonna use your bathroom. <laughs> and disappear for 45 minutes. No one shits for 45 minutes. My feet fall asleep at 15. Guys, look, I am 34 years old. I live alone in an apartment with a cat, and I do stand-up, mostly for free. I am the success story of my family. My mom was great, I love my mom, she was awesome. Uh, 
My mom always wanted to be one of those cool moms. She wanted to be one of those like, really cool moms, and every now and then she would just take it way too far. Like one time I found out she took my youngest brother to a Coldplay concert. They went into the bathroom and they did coke at Coldplay. That is a true story, ladies and gentlemen. I went up to my mother after I found that out and I was like, what are you doing? What kind of example are you setting for this family? How can you possibly call yourself a mother? How can you bring that garbage into our home? Coldplay mom? Really? <laughs> Got really weird, irrational fears. Got am afraid of people who crack their own necks. Yeah, I don't mind this shit, but this? What is that? I feel like I'm just gonna watch a murder-suicide happen in real time. People went to school for years to learn how to do that properly, and you're like, it's cool, I got this. Yeah. Preach me out. My other rational fear is I can't drive on the freeway behind any truck that's carrying giant pipes or logs because I have seen Final Destination and you are not getting me today, Death. I will change lanes immediately. My biggest irrational fear is I'm actually just really afraid my funeral is going to be lame. Like, look, every funeral I've ever been to, it's just like, it's just sad. It's like a normal church service that just happens to have a dead guy in the front. Like, I just... I don't want that. I want people to celebrate how I lived. I don't want them to mourn how I died. I want people to celebrate my life. So I figured out how I'm gonna overcome this fear in my death. You're all witnesses to it tonight. I want my funeral to be a frat party, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I want it to be sponsored by Little Caesars. I want it to be BYOB. I want someone to hook up with a family member in the bathroom. I want someone to get so drunk they think I passed out and they draw a dick on my face. That's how I want to go out. I want to leave this world. I feel like I can talk to the guys real quick. Uh, gentlemen, we need to get better. We got we to gotta start treating women better, guys. I don't know what happened. Yes, thank you. I don't know what happened, but we just like, we just stopped putting in effort. I don't know where that happened. Like, you realize we used to make mixtapes for people. We used to sit by a radio and record shit on a cassette and hope to God it told you our feelings through other people's music. Like, we used to do that, and now we're just like, hey, you're attractive, here's a picture of my dick. <laughs> there is no such thing as a productive, unsolicited dick pic, gentlemen. It just doesn't happen. You know what happens when you send an unsolicited dick pic? She immediately sends it to all her friends and they laugh about it. That is it. That is the only thing you get from your dick being on the internet. There is no other benefit to that at all. We gotta start doing better. Women are amazing. They can do whatever they want. They can be with whatever they want. They can be whoever they want. You can get both, send a dick pic, and she can send you one of hers back. That is the age we are living in. We gotta get better. I actually don't live alone. Uh, I do, uh, I have a girlfriend, she lives with me, and uh, she's, she's really great about uh, managing her birth control, uh, which is awesome, because that means I get to have sex without a condom, which I never realized how amazing it is until I had to have sex with a condom. <laughs> had no clue that that was awful. Uh, she, for whatever reason, she just messed up and didn't you know, take her birth control, and she was like, look, we've got a week. We can either not have sex, or we can have sex with a condom. <laughs> Halfway through sex with a condom, we both gave up and watched The Sopranos. It was, <laughs> and I, like having sex without a condom is like going to the beach on a beautiful day, and there's this glorious sunset, and it's amazing. It's like God painted this picture just for you, and things just make sense in the universe for once in this crazy fucking life. And then you get to fuck that sunset. It's wonderful. I remember the first time we met and uh, we were having sex. And, uh, no, it wasn't like we had dinner and then immediately had sex, right? 
she had like a six times six date rule. All right, I had to wait a little bit. Uh, but we, so we're, we're, we're about to have sex, and halfway through sex, she looks me dead in the eye and she goes, Did you come in me yet? <laughs> that is a trap if I've ever heard one, but there's a follow up question. I was like, uh, No, I didn't. And she goes, Why not? <laughs> Immediately pulled out and put the condom I told her I had on in the first place. Just not trapping me with kids. I, um,. It was a slow burn, I like that, thank you. <laughs> like, oh, I get it, because the condom and the thing, when people have sex, they have kids. Oh, that makes sense. I can't drink with my friends anymore. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, when guys get together and they start drinking, they start asking hypothetical questions. And the more they drink, and the more questions they ask, the gayer it gets. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but every dude wants to know the monetary value of their homosexuality. So I'm hanging out with my friends, and my friend's like, all right, dude, for a million dollars, would you let a guy take you from behind? That dude's played this game before, by the way. My friend doesn't skip a beat. He's like, for a million dollars, yeah, I'd let a guy take you from behind. Because I'd be rich, and who knows, I might like it. Then it just got even gayer, so then my friend's like, all right, dude, there's a hundred dicks on the wall, and you get a million dollars for every, I don't know why it got so creepy right there, I'm sorry, it just, just felt right, you know what I mean? I'm gonna still do it, okay, shut up. And you get a million dollars for every one that you suck, how many do you do? How many do you do, sir? Hold on, time out. There's just way too many responses going on here. I've never had multiple dudes like 24, 73, 86. The goddamn auction, like. Put it by, 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 put it by. All right, you wouldn't do a single one? My favorite part about that is she looked at him and she was like, yeah, how many would you do? I said every one. You, you do what? I said every one. Well, the joke's not for you. <laughs> Women can't play this game. I mean, you can, but you know, it's kind of unfair. All right, so you wouldn't do a single one? All right, I heard 73 back here. Well, that is, first of all, that is way too specific of a number. <laughs> There are way, look, there are way too many of you that have played this game on more than one occasion. Because it wasn't even like he just pulled 73 out of a hat. This is a man who has thought about what it would take to get $73 million, how much it would cost him in dignity, and then decided that 73 is the cutoff. It's... I did, who, who said, uh, who said if they have to finish? That was good. That was, you said that? All right, so what if I told you, well, cause I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, so do, does your number change if they have to finish? Does that change things for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, I thought he asked a question he doesn't even need an answer for. Just, how many would you do? You do all of them? That's all I do. That's all I do. You know what I like about him is he didn't even look at her to see if that was going to be okay. He was like, no, babe, we're going to be rich. You can't deal with it. This is what it takes. This is, this is where we're at. I had somebody ask, do they have to be real dicks? Then he straight up started thinking. He was like, well, if they're dildos, I don't give a fuck. I guess... Whatever, there's no finishing, there's no cleanup later, it's fine. I can handle this. Do I have the money on me? That is a fucking great question, sir. 
They're like, can I get 50 million before I suck one dick? And then there are way too many people in this room that have played this game. My friend was like, I'd probably do about four. But I wouldn't want to do more than four because after that I'd probably get good at it. <laughs> I told that joke at a bar and this super gangster black dude stood up and he was like, I do all of them, son! I do all of them! I'll be a hundred million dollars richer! I looked at him and I was like, sir, your enthusiasm for sucking dick tells me you'd probably do it for free. He got super offended, he stood up, popped out his chest, he was like, hey man, say that shit again. I don't know what else to do, I froze up, so I just went. <laughs> Save my life so I can be here tonight. Thank you so much, you guys are amazing.